Streaming dominates the Emmys. Amazon CEO gets grilled by Congress over HBO Max, and you'll soon be able to watch movies at home while they're still in theaters. This and so much more coming up on The Streaming Insider. What's up streamers, it's Jason from The Streamable and every week we bring you behind the scenes of the biggest news in streaming. And this week there was a major shakeup in how you'll be able to stream movies at home. Remember a few months ago this pandemic thing happened? Well movie theaters shut down and movie studios were forced to try something new. So they started releasing movies direct to consumer. And one of the first ones that they did was Trolls World Tour. Universal's movie did about a hundred million dollars in their first three weeks and that led to NBC Universal's Jeff Schell to say that this is gonna be a way going forward and AMC one of the largest theater chains CEO Adam Arone was not happy he said that this meant that Universal movies would no longer be available in AMC theaters. So the two of them kind of fought it out for a couple months, but eventually the two sides reached a deal. This week it was announced that Universal Movies would appear in theaters for at least 17 days or three weekends. Why that's important is for the first time, you'll really be able to see movies at home while they're still in theaters. Right now you have to wait about two and a half months from when they're first released in theaters before you can buy a digital download. But to be honest, AMC didn't really have a choice. The movie industry is being shaken by this pandemic and AMC had to change. Are you curious why you can't have HBO Max on your Fire TV? Well, it turns out Congress is too. Check this out. Is it fair to use your gatekeeper status role in the streaming device market to promote your position as a competitor in the video streaming market with respect to content? Uh I'm not familiar with the details of those negotiations. As you said, they're underway right now. Uh, I predict that the companies will eventually come to an agreement. And I think this is kind of uh, two large companies negotiating agreements, kind of normal case of normal right. commerce. It, but it, so on the plus side, Amazon CEO says that he predicts that they will reach a deal, but he doesn't really know why it's not on Fire TV devices. But in the meantime, HBO Go and HBO Now were supposed to leave Fire TV devices today. But the two sides have reached a deal to at least keep HBO Now on the platform, which will be rebranded as HBO. This also affects Roku, where HBO Now will now be the HBO app. But what does this mean for people who previously used HBO Go? Well, it's not that simple. But good news, we found a trick where you can actually sign up for HBO Max on another platform and use your credentials to log into HBO Now. We have full details in the description below so you can do it really easily. People had hoped that NFL Sunday ticket would be easier to get and a little cheaper in 2020, but unfortunately the prices and the details around it came out this week and it's just as difficult and expensive as ever. For most people, it will cost $300 for NFL Sunday ticket and $400 for NFL Sunday ticket max, which includes NFL Red Zone as well as the Fantasy Channel. If you can get DirecTV, you're not eligible, which means that only people who are apartment dwellers can really get this online package. The good news though is they're continuing to offer a student plan which is just a hundred bucks for the entire season. If you wait until August you might be able to get it for 80 with a coupon code which they've done in years past. So one of the latest streaming services to launch was Peacock and this week they revealed that they've had 10 million signups since launch. Remember a signup isn't a subscriber. You can get Peacock for free and all also, Peacock Premium is free for Xfinity and Cox customers. So while 10 million is a good start, especially when you consider Fire TV and Roku, it will be interesting when they actually reveal their paid subscribers. We had a surprise streaming launch this week as Viacom CBS relaunched CBS All Access. They haven't rebranded it, that will come in 2021, but the relaunch comes with a new interface and 75 new shows. Well, good news for streaming insider fans, you can actually get a month free of CBS All Access. There's a link in the description which will give you all the details on how to sign up and try it out for yourself. And given that Champions League will be only on CBS All Access starting off, 
August, you can watch every game through the final with the free promo code. And finally, streaming services once again dominated the Emmys, with Netflix leading the way with 160 nominations. And here's a surprise, Quibi, yes, Quibi even got some nominations in the short form category. So even if their billions can't buy subscribers, maybe it can get them a couple of Emmys. And that's it for this week's edition of the Streaming Insider. Leave us a note in the comments below. Let us know what you think of the brand new CBS All Access. And now that movies are gonna be available at home, are you even gonna still go to movie theaters? If you like this, make sure you hit that like button and hit subscribe so you can get next week's edition of the Streaming Insider. Make sure you visit us at thestreamable.com all week long for the latest in streaming news and reviews. As always, for The Streamable, I'm Jason, and this has been The Streaming Insider.